Hello, welcome to Sob for Living. And this is the video that uh, was supposed to be up by now, but is being filmed right now instead. Well, hello. Thank you so much for clicking this video. And if you're new to my channel, um, I usually have a Money Management Monday video. And I make videos every Monday sharing our finances because I wanted to make um, simple, tight, monetary, poverty, <laughs> um, income, living videos. I wanted to make them more normal. I think because a lot of it is, especially in our day and age where we are kind of freaking out, myself included, about finances and stuff, in the end, it's all going to be okay. And I really encourage you to check out um, this Is This American Poverty or This Is American Poverty Living video. I will leave it down below. But today's video is kind of, it's more about the hardships in the months where things seem like they're going really good until you kind of sit down and work out all of the details and realize just how um, discouraging it was. I'm in a much better place now filming this than I was on that video and I was very easily distracted um, and it was just a hodgepodge of trying to put 40 minutes of video for a video that was only like 10-15 minutes but there was just so much interruptions. So I'm going to try to keep that basic. I filmed a video last year talking about all of the side incomes I do, all the side hustles, and the importance of trying to build up a savings. And the the essence of that video is still accurate. I, especially with it being, um, this is distracting me, <laughs> my kid didn't put all his laundry away. Um, especially with it being tax return season, we're getting some of our money back that we've worked hard for. Um, the government's kindly letting us have it back. I remember so many times people talking about the um, things that they were going to do with that money. You know, whether it was renovate their kitchen that they had done five years ago. And, and, and hear me out. They're all perfectly fine things. Get an RV. Go to Disney World. Renovate some area of your home. Repave your whatever. Again, all of those are not necessarily bad things in and of themselves if you already have a savings. If you don't, I highly encourage you to set those things aside for now and put it into savings if you were if you were able to get a tax return. Um, usually if you have kids, you have some kind of return. Um, live way below your means and build up that savings and that is assuming you make above the poverty income bracket. In in my previous and earlier videos, I talked about um, our Dave Ramsey story, and it's not the common Dave Ramsey story you hear. It's one that we were in a class and we were trying to figure out why we weren't doing well at this budgeting thing, why um, it seems like every paycheck we were just struggling and, and scrambling and trying to make sure everything was being met. And um, what we walked away from that class was we live way below most average people, especially those that were trying to take this class. Um, the bottom bracket of the income at the time was $30,000. And we had three kids we, my husband and I were just kind of like throwing up our hands like, no, nope, this is why we can't figure it out. We don't make $30,000. That would be wonderful. You know, at the time we were making about sixteen dollars to $18,000 a year. And this was back in 2012. So that was kind of my wake up call to, okay, we can't live like everyone else, which is kind of the essence of Dave Ramsey, right? You know, live like no one else so you can live like no one else. But while many people use the Dave Ramsey and the money management to basically work them work their way towards being a millionaire, we turned it into more continuing to live this lifestyle that we have and that we well 
enjoy to a certain extent. I mean, nobody really enjoys scrambling every month to make sure that there's money to eat. But my husband is going to be a pastor. That is his dream job. I'm able to stay at home. That is my dream job. I have dreamed about that my entire life. And now we're just slowly and steadily, steadily, more slowly than steadily, um, working our area and living the sod buster life, which a sod buster was a derogatory term used as um, somebody that works works the land. It wasn't a, um, a compliment. It was kind of more, you know, they're down, they're dirty, they're willing to live in sods um, in order to have this farmland. It, I think my husband said it came from a movie he watched years ago and he just he just liked the term the sod buster because where we were you you worked the soil and where we are now you're really working the soil and you're living in in ways that most people don't consider um ideal or to attain in order to create that lifestyle so the more the more we get on in life the more i just i my husband named it and I, I love it more and more each time <clears throat> because it doesn't just talk about our physical lifestyle we live. It kind of goes in deeper in, in how we live in, in multiple ways, not just land living, but um, homeschooling and all of the rebel things in today. But today's video is more about, I told you how to build that savings and, and kind of how we got to that point. Building the savings was one of the first things we did. Well. Okay, one of the first things we did was kind of scratch everything we learned and take a bare minimum, bare bones, bones, oh my goodness, bare bones um, budget and live basically on savings for one month. Now, this was after we got our tax return. We were able to live off of savings for one month and um, every single paycheck that my husband earned. We cashed it, we put it in an envelope. I don't recommend this by the way, to keep it in the bank at this point. Um, we cashed it, we had it in an envelope, and then at the end of the month we took the amount and we budgeted it for the following month. So we were living off of that while his paychecks were coming in that following month. And then whatever was left over, we could put back into the savings and build the savings up. Now, we haven't been able to do that, I think, since my fourth child was born, but in essence, that was the idea. Now, we came up here and we had sold our house. We, we didn't put everything we sold that house for. We didn't put it into this house, but we put the majority of it and then put everything else into savings. Then the pandemic happened. Okay, I'm gonna, distraction, interruption. Let me try to get back. Um, pandemic hit, house closed, we moved in. Then we had that savings. <clears throat> what was left? And the what was left is supposed to get us through, you know, the next four years while my husband is in school. But he works part time and about six months into it, we realized just, that I needed to kind of bring in somebody as well. So to try to get to the point of this video, which if y'all know me and y'all been here, I like to chat. <laughs> I'm a chatty person and I like to really weave words into kind of a full canvas rather than just focusing on the main theme of the canvas. Um, the, the savings that we had built up dwindles so fast especially when like I said you've got some your husband working part-time you've got five kids you've got you know inflation happening and a lot of these other things and even trying to do a no-spend year and trying to live minimally and frugally and simplistically as possible still creates some holes when I don't have all the work coming in or multiple other things. And so I was so encouraged by March. I felt like I wasn't spending more money than necessary. 
And then, excuse me, at the end of the month, I sat down, tallied all the receipts, wrote everything down, checked all the boxes, and um, lo and behold, we had to pull from savings again to make sure that we met all of the bills. And that was very that was very discouraging. Let me try to recenter myself because I feel like I'm going on so many different directions, but all these different directions kind of have a central theme, and that is the savings. Savings has so many central themes. One, it's it's for the rainy day. It is meant to be used. It is a question when something happens. Okay, so I say the rainy day. Basically, the rainy day, I can't um, do much outside, right, in a rainy day. Well, right now, I really can't do much about the finances, so that's why I'm relying on savings, but still trying to keep to the principles of living simply, staying minimal, and being frugal. And then there's the accident days. So maybe the car breaks down and, and we have a really high bill that we gotta pay or our car's totaled or we have to replace a new car. Um, my husband loses his job or we have a medical emergency. That's, you know, another part of the savings. The third part of the savings is, <clears throat> in, a, in a small way, it's kind of, for, for those that are new, uh, my husband is 20 years older than me. Well, okay, that's around to the nearest 10. He is, uh, if you want the exact date, I had to figure this out when I was going to get married to him. He is 18 years, 11 months, and 22 days older than I am. 19 years. And he's getting to the age, he's, he's, pat, he's in his 50s, I'm in my 30s, and he's getting to the age where it's just harder to do things, it's harder to work long, it's harder to do physical hard work. And um, we have no retirement plan. There's just never been any kind of money to do that. And so the savings is kind of as he, you know, works less and kids get older and there's things that come up, that's kind of our retirement plan, if you will. It's just kind of a cushion for, you know, when things aren't gonna work out as well as we hoped. <clears throat> and then there are months like this where we're just in a pretty rainy season, metaphorically and physically speaking. Like I said, I really had thought I had done well in March with our expenditures until I tally up all the things and things that maybe we wouldn't consider frivolous but didn't necessarily fit into the food, clothing, and shelter categories per se that I had set for us um, in the snow spend year. Tools that need to be replaced, or car parts, or dude, gas? Our gas went up probably 60 to $80 this past month just because it was during Lent season and we had more traveling to do in the, uh, during the week. <clears throat> and you know, as much as we tried to fit in our grocery shopping during that time, it didn't always work out. So then we have to go back and do this. This is another reason why I really want to work out the once a month shopping. That will really help out, I think, our guests in the long run. Anyway, kind of going back to the, the video I had made, it was about the importance of savings when you have a poverty income budget and doing all you can to to live below your means even when you're just trying to pinch the pennies and make them stretch a little bit further uh, just so that you have that little cushion when it's absolutely necessary in the at the end of the day I still hold fast to the fact that I think I did really well um, for me in my circumstances with the no spend year didn't come out perfectly um, I I will admit that and I can't even begin to say you know like what I could hold up and say well this is why I didn't uh, execute it perfectly um, but just in essence of being simple being frugal and working hard at that um, I feel like I'm making progress that's kind of what the essence of that video was just to really work at being wise with 
what you're spending right now, um, it's easy to want to kind of go crazy. The, the thing about money is once you're in the habit for, for spenders, let me just make this personal for spenders because I'm, I'm a spender. I'm not naturally a saver. It is easy to get started spending and then just kind of spiraling. It's not natural to decide, okay, this is what I'll, this is the only thing I need and I'm just going to leave. I've gotten a lot more disciplined in walking in, deciding I don't need anything and walking out. I've gotten a lot better at that and it's becoming a little bit more natural. It still feels like I, all of the, um, monitors in the store are on me when I'm walking out, but I'm getting better at that. And, um, even if I pick up one thing, it's, here's the mind of a spender, okay? For those that just have no clue. The mind of a spender is, here's a pair of pants that my boys need, here's a second pair uh, for the same price in pretty good condition. Since I'm buying one, might as well buy a second so that if something happens to the first, I don't have to worry about trying to find a second pair a short notice in a time when it's really hard to find this first pair of jeans. Now that I've got the two pairs of jeans, okay, now I have a son that needs a shirt. Okay, I found a shirt for him. Put that in. I have a daughter that needs a, a, uh, a couple of shirts. Okay, I've got a um, son with a pair of pants, daughter with a shirt or two. This one was really cute. I think she'll like this one. But these two are actually much better suited to what she needs. We'll just get all three because I know she would really like that one. You know, it's not needed. There's something she could wear with it. So now we've got three out of the five kids that I have that have something. <clears throat> um, my oldest one will come and say, I found a pair of pants that will work well for me. I'm like, oh yeah, you're getting uh, small in your other pants, probably a good idea. Go ahead and get that. I can't get all four kids and not my five-year-old something. I mean, yes, we're learning. But that's just really hard, especially because that's something he would really like. So let's see if we can find anything for him. There's no clothes his size. This is a very common thing, by the way. There's no clothes his size. I really don't want to give him another toy. What about this? And then we'll pick, okay, that's the process. Then we go and say, this is something I've been going to the thrift stores for often. Muffin tins. I really need some muffin tins. So I've gone to the thrift store. Muffin tins, nope, I don't, I don't see any here. Oh, but here's a French pest that I've really been wanting to find. And I can justify it because my Keurig has died. Mr. Coffee um, is fine, but the glass already broke on the little pot thing. I've already had a friend give me that, but this would be a good backup is that it should happen. And I really like French pest. And then here is the whole thing, okay? And this is why usually for me, I come home exhausted after shopping. Okay? That's the whole process. Every time you go into a store, I need to get rice. I need to get um, this canned good. I need to get that. You're walking the aisles. Oh, I didn't have that on my list, but I know we're getting low. I should put that in the cart while I'm here and already thinking about it and doing it. Did we have tuna still on the shelves or did we use it all up? I don't know. I better pick up a four pack because that would be something that my daughter can eat and we need to have that on hand. <sighs> that is the internal mind of a spender. Do I come home with new decor? Do I come home with new shoes for me? Do I come home with... No. Literally everything I have purchased has to do for my family in some way, shape, or form. But it's still money being spent, even if it's not like justifiable spending, but even if it's intentional spending, it goes quickly. And once that spiral happens, you saw in my thought process how that, you know, 50 cents becomes $2, becomes $5, becomes $25. So really encourage you to do this do that no spent week try for a no spent month work up to a no spent quarter work up to no spend year don't even have to do it consecutively 
do what you can with what you have where you are. And thank the Lord for savings because it's needed. It's not smart to go into debt when the savings is there. I understand that. But it's really hard to dip into that savings because it becomes easier next time and it becomes easier next time. And then by the end of the year, you look at it and you're like, where's the savings? Where is all of our hard work? That's kind of the pitfall of a savings. It's kind of, it can become kind of its own idol that you kind of put up here and rely too heavily on it. Um, it is a pitfall. But, you know, if the dollar crashes, it's all gone anyway. So it's not something... I really rely on um, the family and friends that have and and subscribers that have generously stepped up and helped us out like you genuinely do not know just how much that has helped us there's also a pitfall in that because I have caught myself many times when things are tight, when things are hard, thinking, oh, if we could just get some help here. If something would just come in, it would just be so nice. And when it does, it's legit like this rock on my shoulder that's just fallen off. But that's not a healthy way to live. And it's another pitfall. So uh, the savings are there. The generosity is there. The discipline is being worked on. And savings is, I don't think people, what, what was the statistic I saw? There was a statistic about less than half of people, less than half of the people here on earth or in the United States have savings. I think it was less than half. And it was a really small percentage of number. And I, th and I think about all the people that do so many things that if you just let it go for a while, you could build up that savings. It, it is attainable. It is possible. Go and try and do it. Okay, I'm rambling enough. Um, I didn't really want this to be a long video. One of the things I'm working on, and I'm going to try to diligently show you the progression of, is what it looks like to save $1,000 and I've I've tried to make these before but it's a lot of footage that gets um, lost and um, really hard to kind of string together and show I <clears throat> I'll do <clears throat> I'll do what I can to film that and show that to you maybe like have a monthly update as to where we are and just have a realistic look of somebody in poverty income saving up a thousand dollars what you can do how you can do it and um how long it takes but it's so important and uh, it can go so quickly but once it's worked once you've worked really hard to build that up you like guard it because you y'all know how quickly it goes and you're like well there's three years of my life uh gone in one month gone in one trip so we're gonna try to do that and it's not gonna be as simple as getting a pizza delivery job all right i, I will wrap this video up and i i pray that it was um worthwhile to watch i, I hope that it has encouraged you in some way to in productivity in some way um, and all of my ramblings work out to the edification somewhere all right thank you again for watching this video and taking the time and any of the videos i mentioned are in the description box below as well as the playlist for small income living and if there's any other videos that you would like to see i encourage you to put them in the comments below and i will try to film that as soon as i can and until next time, have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video.